Welcome to Word Study 3. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of God Most High and the name of His Son Jesus and the name that is above all names. This is Word Study 3. And it is entitled God Will Not Understand. That is the study that you're going to go through tonight, today, this afternoon. Word Study 3 God Will Not Understand. As human beings, we go through many experiences, good and bad, and mostly when doing the bad things, we expect God to understand our situations, our circumstances, you know, and not judge us very harshly, that he will understand, you know, I was going through this particular case, you know, God is going to understand, you know, if it had not been for this situation, I would not have done it. God will, 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 will understand. And we are saying, the three things about the character of God are important in this particular case. That when we have that image in our brains, whenever we are doing a wrong thing, you know, that God will understand why I did this. In fact, he's actually seeing, he's not blind, he can't see what I'm going through. You know, I've prayed, I've done everything, but there's no way out, he's going to understand. These three things about the character of God are very critical as far as this uh, particular case is concerned. Number one, God is holy, meaning he is set apart, he is separated from sin, free from defilement. Number two, he will not lower his standards of holiness. That is number two, he will never lower his standards, be it of holiness, be it of uh, his ways. God will never lower his standards, no matter what, to cater for a human being, to cater for an angel. God never lowers his standard. His standards are eternal. Number three, his judgment is righteous and just. Those are three key uh, statements which will guide us even as we go through our word study three this particular moment. And a random question that is normally asked, and I've heard it before, is that if I became a robber and steal millions of money from a bank and decide I will never steal again, then I use that money to enjoy life, set a family, provide for myself, and also help the needy, the sick, the widow, the orphans, those in prison, etc. Will God still judge me? Yet I am doing good to the people of the earth. There is no better place to get reference from apart from the Bible, the written word of God, the Holy Spirit in the language of man. So we are going to go to scriptures direct to answer that particular question and see whether indeed God will understand or he will not understand. And the first scenario is in 1 Samuel chapter 15, verse 1 to 34. But what is the message? The instruction of God was clear upon Saul. He was supposed to go and attack the Amalekites and wipe out everything, including their livestock and the sheep, the goat, everything. But when actually Saul goes there, and he wipes out everything. He saves the best, the fat and sheep, you know, the, including even the king. He did not execute the agenda of God. And what do we see? When you complete up to verse 34, you realize that because of that one alone, as much as Saul wanted to use some of this best, you know, fat and calf from the Amalekites and offer them as a sacrifice unto God, he was not justifiable before the Lord. God rejected him because of disobedience. What does that mean? That we cannot use our earthly property, our earthly wealth to bribe God. You know, Saul thought that by simply offering the sacrifice, the best, you know, the fattened sheep and the cows and the bulls, he thought, probably he thought, that by offering them, God uh, would not be angry with him because he disobeyed, that he would actually bribe God. Huh? And that one is not what we see. The Lord actually rejects him rejects him, meaning that God did not understand, you know, that these were to be used for his service. God did not understand that. It was a matter of obedience. Did you obey or not? You did not obey. Then that's it. I reject you as king of Israel. That is First Samuel chapter 15 verse 1 to 34 which is the first scenario that talks about how Saul disobeys God and how the Lord rejects Saul based on on instruction that he had given unto him. Number two, the second scenario is the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord. 
and Uza. Second Samuel chapter 6 verse 1 to 7. So we see a scenario whereby Uza, we meet a man named Uza, who was son of Abinadab. And Uza is among those Levites who are to carry the Ark of the Covenant of God. But something happens along the way. Remember, only Levites, those from the priestly tribe of Levi, they are the ones who are to carry the Ark of the Covenant of God. Not to touch it, but to carry it. But we see a scenario whereby son, the two sons of Aminadab, Uzzah and Ahayu, they are, they are actually leading this cart that is carrying the Ark of the Covenant of God. And they were oxen, you know. As the oxen were going, one of the ox stumbled. And Uzzah, remember he was a priest, he stretched out his, his arm and touched the Ark of the Covenant, the Ark of God. And at that moment, the Bible says, God struck him dead. But I want to ask us this particular question. Was Uzzah not justified to touch the Ark of the Covenant of God? Was it not going to fall? Probably it would fall. And Uzzah saw this as a helping hand. But let me tell you, viewers, as per what God did, it means that God will not understand. God did not understand that. In fact, the Bible says the anger of the Lord was kindled and he struck him on the spot. Verse 7, God blazed in anger against Uzzah and struck him hard because he had profaned the chest. He did not have reverence. The instructions were very clear. Nobody could touch the Ark of the Covenant of God apart from, I think it is the high priest who would only, you know, sacrifice, make sacrifice and the blood would touch the mercy seat once every year and that blood would be for the atonement of the sins of the people. But even the high priest was going to offer that sacrifice on behalf of the people of Israel. Himself, he had to be cleansed, prepared, set apart because he was going to meet God. You know, and the Ark of the Covenant, the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord was only to be carried by the Levites who constituted ancient Jewish priestly class. They must carry the ark by using two wooden poles inserted through rings on each side, as touching the ark itself will result in death at the hands of God himself. Uzzah, the Levite, touched the ark with his hand in order to steady it, and God instantly killed him. And what are we saying? We mean that God will not actually understand. You know, we go through tough times sometimes and we say, I will repent afterwards, God will provide a way. You know, he will understand. But we are being shown in this particular scripture that God will actually not understand. He will choose his holiness first before us. He will choose his standards first before us. God will never lower his standards. And remember, when we even talk of the Ark of the Covenant, it composed of the mercy seat where God, the cloud of God would descend, the Shekinah would descend, you know. The place whereby at the top of the Ark of the Covenant, there were two cherubims there, and at the center that was where the glory of the Lord, the Shekinah, the cloud of God would descend, and that is actually referred to as the mercy seat. So actually touching the Ark without preparedness is actually coming before the Lord, and very well we know that God is not tolerant. He has zero, zero tolerance to sin. He cannot tolerate sin. Sin cannot be in his presence. He will smite and kill. And the wrath will be poured on anybody who comes to him with sin. Hmm? That's what you actually see in this particular scripture. Despite Uzzah even being a Levite and a priest, you know, God did not understand. The instruction was clear. The standards were clear. You can get further information. In Numbers chapter 4 verse 15, Deuteronomy chapter 31 verse 9, Joshua chapter 3 verse 3. And if somebody is caught up in a situation whereby they are saying God will understand that they actually commit that act, only one thing can save that person. Only genuine repentance through Jesus Christ, the Savior of the world, can purify us from our sins. Only repentance of heart, body, soul and spirit in Christ Jesus can make God understand. Remember we are living in the dispensation of the new covenant of the Lord. The covenant 
that came with grace and we are saying in the past God overlooked ignorance appertaining to know that he will understand we know the ways of God and we are saying according to Acts it says that in the past God would overlooked such ignorance but right now he commands all people to repent meaning that true salvation true repentance true justification can only come by accepting the blood of Jesus to wash us and accepting the death of Jesus Christ in our lives so that even as we journey on as sinful people remember in the eyes of the maker no human being is without sin even as we continue on in the journey of life we may be justified so that we may be justified before God the Father through the blood of Jesus that was poured on the cross for us otherwise God will not understand he will not understand the circumstances he will not understand the situation he will not understand the calamity you know the happening he will not understand only one thing can make god the father understand the purging that took place on calvary the blood of jesus only through the blood of jesus only through jesus Christ can actually god the father understand because he has zero tolerance to sin he cannot mix with sin he has never mixed with sin he will not lower his standards to meet that of man ndio wakutane katika so that they meet at the middle that can never happen it will never happen but we know very well as much as we are saying god will not understand he is a compassionate god he is a loving god that is why he gave us the darling of heaven he gave us the messiah that whosoever shall go to the messiah and accept the messiah and follow the messiah follow Christ Jesus he shall be saved from the wrath of god shalom that is what study 3 god will not understand only through jesus will god understand shalom shalom